2013 marked the end of the year-long Our Singapore Conversation, an exercise to get Singaporeans thinking about the kind of future they want. It set the stage for the Prime Minister to announce a significant shift in the government's approach towards nation-building during the National Day rally. Singaporeans sense correctly that the country is at a turning point. Mr Lee announced sweeping reviews on healthcare financing, education and a bolder focus on social policies. Now another issue that's likely to preoccupy political leaders here is how best to mitigate the effects of the growing income divide. The leaders have turned to what they describe as compassionate meritocracy, that is to maximise opportunity and moderate inequality. And observers say more of Singapore's policies will be tilted in that direction. In December, further priorities were laid out during the ruling People's Action Party convention, reinforcing the government's agenda. Political watchers say one of the main challenges for government is to get the buy-in from an increasingly diverse and some would say fragmented population. When government communicates, government has to persuade. Government can't always legislate, you know, and government sh should not uh, legislate against an overwhelming majority of public opinion. I think that is a sure, sure recipe for disaster. We are just normalising as a democracy. We are in perennial participatory politics where it's, every issue has uh, to be debated whether officially or informally over on, on the online space and more and more people feel that they have a voice that they can use and technology has created a platform where this can actually happen and happen um, with very low barriers to entry. The release of the Population White Paper in January, a roadmap to address the country's demographic challenges, sparked heated debate offline and online. New internet rules announced in May to license online news sites sparked off another round of robust debate among Singaporeans. The rules affected only 10 online news sites, all of them from mainstream media. But that was little comfort to some bloggers. I think it's a bit unfortunate because the uh, image that comes across is that it's uh, the wild, wild west, the, the bad stuff, and you know, all troublemakers were online. And uh, that surely cannot be the way it is, actually. There are plenty of moderate people online as well. The Broadcasting Act will be amended in 2014 with the view of applying the new licensing regime also on overseas news sites reporting on Singapore. And as the PAP reaches its electoral midterm, all eyes will also be on the likely fourth generation team of leaders that will lead the country forward and strengthen the party's appeal to voters ahead of the next elections due in 2016.